Hello and welcome to Miniage Painting. Today I want to share my process of painting up 33 Bliss Barb Archers for a commission I am working on. I'll also share some tips for fighting through painting burnout that many of us deal with in our mini painting journeys. Until then, let's get started with painting these guys and gals. I'm going to start by using my airbrush to quickly Zenithal highlight them with some grace ear. The Zenithal is the only time I will use the airbrush, and you can dry brush the same color if you do not have an airbrush. The final Zenithal is going to be White Scar. We want this to only hit the highest points, leaving the gray between the black shadows and the white highlights. Now onto the painting. I'm going to start with some skin tones. The client wants the models to have a couple of different skin colors, so I'm going to do this with four different contrast paints. Sigor Brown, Darkoth Flesh, Golem and Flesh, and Skeleton Horde. Now let's apply some Sigor Brown to the first group of models. And now some Darkoth Flesh. The Gulliman Flesh went down next. Finally, I applied the Skeleton Horde. With the skin tones down, it was time to start the real batch painting. The first color is Saish Purple. Contrast paints and the Zenithal highlights that I did before are what make this a speed painting process. We can get a lot of color variation due to the nature of the contrast paint. The Saish purple was applied to all the cloth that the models are wearing. The next paint I applied is Wildwood. I applied this color to the wood of the bows, as well as the leather of the quivers and scabbards. With the Wildwood down, I decided to go with some Black Templar for the tassels, straps, and cords that were all around the model. With those contrast paints down, it was time to start on the metallics. I started with some Iron Hand Steel and painted this onto all of the silver parts of the models. This meant the surface of the shoulder pads, gauntlets, and any chains that were on the model. With that down, now it was time to start with all that lovely gold trim. For this, I used Retributor Armor. This is where burnout started to hit me. 33 models is a lot to do when you are doing the same steps over and over again, especially when you are painting the same models. My tip is this, break up the monotony by doing other tasks and switching back and forth to the one that is causing trouble. I did about one third of the gold before I wanted to switch to the hair. So I started to paint the hair of the High Tempters in blue with Thousand Suns blue. Pink with some Emperor's Children. And green with some Warp Stone Glow. Since these were only meant to be battle ready, you don't have to highlight every one of them. That said, I will be painting a Keeper of Secrets to a nice standard later. Keep a look out for that video. Back to the hair. The majority of them will be painted red, so I'm going to do this with some simple Mephiston red. 
the blondes will be done with some Zandri dust. For some black hair, I'm using a 50-50 mix of Dark Reaper and Abaddon Black. And the brunettes are going to get a little bit of Doom Bowl Brown. These hair recipes are simplified versions of the video that I did on the subject, which you can find there and in the video description below. When I was done with the hair, I moved back to the gold and did another one third of the trim. This process helped me get through this part as it was killing my motivation. By splitting it into smaller bite sized processes, I was able to power through it. With the gold almost finished, I moved on to starting the bases. I did this by watering down some PVA glue in about a two to one ratio of glue and water. I then applied this all around the base and then dumping the base in some sand. Now I had some time to kill while the sand dried, so I finished up the gold. The first color for the base was Mornfang Brown. However, I'm going to use a couple of dry brushes on top of this, so I mixed more PVA and water into the brown to help seal the sand onto the base. I used roughly a 2 to 1 to 1 ratio of paint, glue, and water. The first dry brush was a 50-50 mix of Mornfang Brown and Averland Sunset. This was just to give a hint of color variation in the dirt. Note, in this step and the next, if you hit the feet of the model, don't worry. It helps to tie them into the environment. On top of that, I applied a dry brush of Ubshanti Bone. It's at this point I really start to like the base, but we aren't done yet. I took some Dawnstone and applied this all over the rocks and ruins on the base. Once that dried, I simply slapped on some Agrax Earthshade and called it good. I did make sure that there wasn't any excess pooling in places that didn't look natural. I also applied this color to any skulls the model had. They were untouched before this, and the shade helps them look natural. With that drying, I made up a smaller batch of PVA glue and dotted this around the base. I then dredged the base in a container of static grass. Some people use a static grass applicator, but I do not have one of those, and I find that doing just this is perfectly fine. The grass will stand up eventually. Finishing the bases off with a rim of a bat and black will leave us with some striking models. A bit of touch up on the parts I missed, because we're always going to encounter those when badge painting, and we're ready for a grand reveal. Thank you all so much for watching. My channel is extremely close to 200 subscribers, and I cannot thank each of you enough for subscribing and continuing to watch, like, and comment. Seriously, I read every one of them. There is a Discord server that you can find in the description of the video. If you'd like to join, I'd love to see you all there. Until next time, I've been Miniage Painting, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.